What you see on your screen is that I'm polishing the shapes of kitten's head as I'm looking to give it more volume and make it look more expressive. This kitten is aware of something. Little by little, using a small brush, I work around its eyes. By adding dark beige tone on the top of his head, I'm generating sensation of roundness, as to make it pop out. We are getting to the point when details start to do matter. For this part of our course, you don't really need any additional layers to work on figure's color. Just use the color base you've created before. In order to polish the drawing, we will use the same dry brush as at previous video, but choosing the smaller dimension. On the other hand, we'll also use a razor tool to modulate. And actually, I'm still not pleased by the legs gradients. So I'll move the colors in order to get the effect that I want to. There are still no such details as nails nor hair. Search for the equilibrium in your gradients, but not for perfection. The torso of the kitten shall also give us sensation of having volume, and we can achieve it by placing little shadows on the left and right side of it. Okay, let's clean the canvas around the kitten. Pick up lasso on your left panel or you can just press the L button. Select the part you want to get rid of and then press Shift. Tiny details in kitten's mouth and ears are the ones which will mark the difference. This part is kind of funny, because it seems that you are using an eyeliner for kitten size makeup. The tricky thing is to make this guy's head look convincing, so modulate its shapes thoughtfully.
Let's work a little with the tail. First of all, we'll correct its shape by tracing guidelines of how it's twisted. The hair is following the curvature of the tail, but hair strokes are shorter, so they give a pointy sensation and break the general shape of the tail. For those of you whom the canvas movement got by surprise, I present you the rotation option. It's very useful too, at least for me, which consists in rotating your screen and putting it in the way you feel more comfortable. You can activate it by choosing rotation option on your left panel or just by pressing R button. So, this is how our tail looks in close view. It got lots of hair. But what we are about to do is to work a little bit on our background. Until this moment it was just plain grey canvas. And what we are about to do is to push the kitten to the foreground. In order to make it happen, I create a new background layer where I will start to trace, using darker tones, some kind of shadow, with big brush and eraser. That's enough for now. If you have this option in your software, activate your brush dynamic settings, named pen pressure. What it will give you is a better modulation of the line you trace, guided by the pressure of your pen, almost as if it was a pencil. Time to look closer at the paws. The ones from the four quarters have slightly different form from the rear quarters paws, as the fingers have different shape. One can compare its difference to the one between humans' hand fingers and feet fingers. You can define its finger shapes by adding some darker hair where the shades are supposed to be, as we already have played the lights.
Let's begin with the details on the fur of the frontal legs. Using the same thin brush as at the beginning, with two beige tones and light brown, we can define the shapes with all kinds of details. Making thin regular strokes, you can work not only the legs, but with the rest of its body. Carefully, break the counter at some places. Keep working from one point of the canvas to another, rotating and zooming whenever needed. As you can see, it's the point where we are using two tones of the same color in order to create visual effect of the fur, using just one type of the brush at the same time. The Siamese cats, unlike the others, have short, soft hair, so you will need to break the shape only from time to time. So, as you can appreciate, I've added some more grey traces to the background, as the illustration needed more contrast, in order to place Kitten on the front of the composition. First of all, we'll duplicate the background layer, to work on both background and shades at the same time. We also create a new folder and place these two layers inside it. And now we are about to give a more vivid colors to our final version. Right. Now we shall create a new adjustment layer. In our case, solid layer is the one. Let's pick some kind of Prussian blue color. As you can see, our background shapes disappeared, but don't worry. By pressing on the filter window, you can choose the way this layer will interact with the layers below it. There are a lot of possibilities, depending on the filter qualities. On this occasion, we'll use soft layer filter. Thanks to this filter, it will be easier to work on cleaning details on the lowest part of the paths and tail. Don't forget to activate the pen pressure options on your dynamic shape panel.
we'll need a darker shade below our kitten in order not to leave it floating on the canvas. The final step for our illustration will consist in adding greenish light to our background. Pick your color fill layer and rasterize it by selecting this option in the right-click list. Afterwards, select Color Gradient tool and the color you would like to add. In the Gradient Pick window, you can choose the kind of option you want. I'll use Foreground to Transparent. Now, I just add it into the right corner of the general color fill. Here you are! Now it seems that the sunbeam is above the kitten's ear. And that's all guys, we've done! I hope you liked this course and learned new things watching my videos. I look forward to meet us again, soon at the next Tootpad course. Bye bye!